First we have, which I think is the first one, uh, Sugarloaf Mountain Ski Club life membership for both you and your wife. And it was very interesting that they, we expect you around here because it says 1996 to 2096. <laughs> picture of Sugarloaf as it was with the first trail cut and one as it is today. about John Christie, and that Stratton story is not right. <laughs> uh, one of the stories I thought he was going to tell was uh, talking about the safety and whatnot of the mountain, and he pretty near cut my head off one day, <laughs> drinking out of, a, out of a spring on sluice, and uh, put his saw down, and, and the saw, I was drinking water. You remember this, John? I do. Yeah. <laughs> well, you should. <laughs> And uh, the saw jumped and went over my head, and it was luckily I was drinking water at the time, or I wouldn't be here talking tonight. Uh, Sugarloaf has been my my life, and uh, I really appreciate all the all the friends and and the people in the ski industry that has been good to me. Uh, I look at the ski club as the early start of my patrolling. Uh, if it hadn't been for the ski club, I might not have been the director of the Chippewa Ski Patrol. It was back in the days when, uh, in late 48 or so, when the Maine Ski Council was still flourishing uh, within the state of Maine, and uh, Amos got up a group of people, uh, ski club people, uh, went to Augusta, and I was a young kid and went to that meeting, and then we came back, and we knew Sugarloaf uh, was always here, but we didn't develop it mainly because it was so far away from the road and Bigelow we was skiing over there anyway and thought, well, we're over there, let's develop the site of Bigelow. Well, what happened is, as the story goes on, was the ski club, some of the members went over there and started skiing and then uh, they started talking about cutting the foliage of, of Flagstaff Lake and flooded that road out, so we came to Sugarloaf. And uh, I really appreciate the picture of, well, of one trail because that's a great meaning to me. I can, uh, uh, the thing at Bigelow that, that really, as a kid walking in there, they were skiing there before, you know, before I got out of high school. And uh, the thing that I feared the most, of course Amos would close the store at nine o'clock at night and there'd only be like five or six of us and uh, we'd go to, over to North Portland, my famous route down 16, that great road, and go up across Lexington Flat, going about 90 miles an hour, as Amos Joe, and we'd pull in there and get in the camp about 11 o'clock at night. And the fear I had as a kid was that there would be a bobcat up on a goddamn limb. When I was trailblazing along, it would jump on top of my back, and that was the worst fear, rather than fear and Amos going off the road something. <laughs> <laughs> but as I said, Sugarloaf's been good to me. Uh, I think Amos was probably the toughest manager I ever worked for. I've already been asked uh, next year. I was wondering what the hell I was going to do during the winter, you know. Uh, it's a long time up here sometimes, these, these long, lonely winters, you know. Uh, and Carol, you know, she hates the cold weather, and I, I can't blame her there. Uh, but I love it, and I always like to ski, and I like the cold weather. And so, anyway, uh, I've been approached by the by the Pine Tree Medical Association to, to work down there maybe three days a week. And if I can pull that off and have it like on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, which they may need me the most, why well, then uh, it'll work out well with the patrol because I can keep in touch with what's going on in the mountain and, and uh, that would be great. But I want to thank you very much for this evening. Thank you. Thank you.